Physical controls are controls that you can touch. These are things like lights, fences, barricades, alarms, cameras, and these types of controls are useful to defend your physical assets, your personnel, your equipment, your facility. It's important to understand these types of controls as a cybersecurity professional because physical security often falls under the realm of cybersecurity. You may be in charge of physical security as a, a cybersecurity professional within your organization. So it's important to understand the physical security piece as well as understanding the technical controls, configuring firewalls and things of that nature. So lighting is a great way to deter access and it can be helpful with other types of controls. So we wanna imagine a facility that we need to protect with maybe a data center in that facility, servers, this is a, a place of business. Lighting is very helpful to deter criminals from breaking into our facility. A well-lit facility makes it, uh, shows that you are spending the time to invest into security for your facility. So a criminal would not want to try and break into a door in a well-lit area. It also provides a degree of safety. Your employees will feel comfortable entering the building early in the morning where it might be dark or maybe leaving late at night if the area is well lit and easy to, uh, to see. It also can provide safety. A well lit area can help ensure that personnel are tripping over sidewalks or having trouble accessing a door. So lighting is very important. Lighting can also be used in conjunction with other physical security devices like cameras. A well lit area can be viewed and recorded by a camera that may not have other optical modes like infrared lighting or night vision. Also, some studies have shown that criminals are less likely to, or criminal activity is deterred by well-lit areas or a focus on lighting. It can also illuminate signs, which can be used to uh, direct personnel to the appropriate area. Okay, employee access only, or maybe this is a loading dock. We have signs about there also can show signs that maybe would deter criminals. If you have lighting over a sign says there's a maximum fine for trespassing, then you're gonna be informing potential intruders that that sign exists. So signs are very helpful as a deterrent and they're also useful to direct employees within your facility. Signs could be external, they could also be internal. You can have signs within your facility, data center this way or just general signs to show what the purpose of each room is. So you don't wanna have regular employees entering your data center by mistake, so help them out and show them that this way is how you get to the data center. You don't wanna have somebody blunder into the data center and wonder, well, what do I do here? And then you have somebody on your team say, well, you can't be in here, sir or ma'am. That's just a bad situation for everybody, so put up signage to show that to help eliminate that confusion. When you also eliminate that confusion, it will allow you to quickly recognize when something's wrong. If you constantly have people stumbling into your data center, for example, because there's no proper signage, then you may be less likely to notice if somebody who's unauthorized walks into the data center or somebody who's attempting to steal your data or steal a, a server. So if you have clear signage, it's very clear where people should go. It's very easy to identify suspicious behavior because the signs are are very well noticed they're very uh, explicit a restricted area should always have signs when you can immediately identify someone who shouldn't be in an area and you can say well did you not see the sign here there's a sign why are you in this area so you have all different types of signs i'm sure you've seen signs this area is under surveillance trespassers are subject to fines those signs can be used as deterrent these can also be a little, instead of deterrence for intruders, they can be just used to help protect your personnel, direct your personnel. You can also have signs as part of your training to show, hey, these are indicators of malware. Maybe you put them up throughout the office. Be careful of phishing attacks. This is a common phishing email. You put up signs showing and trying to train your workforce. So signs have multiple uses. Fences are designed to deter or delay access into a facility. They don't deny access if we're talking about the purpose of security controls. Fence will never completely block or deny access. It can always be cut or climbed or circumvented or some way, but it's often used as a deterrent. If you have a fence around a facility, it shows that there's a focus on security and if that fence is well-maintained, there's no holes in the fence, it's 
not rusted, it's, it's uh, very well kept. That can be another level of deterrent or a sign that you're spending money and you do care about what's inside of that fence. Where you can have other detection devices like cameras or guards looking out windows, seeing anybody who walks into that access point instead of having an open facility where anybody can walk in from any direction. You have a fence around the facility controlling access to one or two or one or more uh, points specifically. There's different gauges of fences. The size of the holes of the fence determine its grade essentially and there's different heights that you can have. For some certifications like CISSP you do need to understand your grades but for a CompTIA certification you're not going to have to memorize the grades or the gauge of fences or the heights. So you don't need to pay attention to that for something like Security Plus or SISA Plus. You could also add additional control. You can add razor wire or barbed wire at the top of fences to further deter. If you do do barbed wire, you'd want to make sure that the barbed wire is at an angle facing outwards or looped around at the top to make it harder for someone to climb over the fence. Of course, it depends on the type of facility. If you're protecting like a hospital, for example, you may not want to have barbed wire, heavy grade fencing around the entire facility. You might want to choose something that's a little more tasteful or a little more aesthetically appeasing. <laughs> uh, gates are a great way to control access to portions of your facility. This is a great place. Now you can have gates for vehicles. You can also have gates for personnel. So both can be used. They can incorporate locks, and this is a great place to put a security guard or cameras and control access. You wanna have a lot of your sensors, your uh, other security controls focused on the gate because this is gonna be the access point. Uh, to go along with gates for personnel, you have these things called access control vestibules. This is one pictured here at a federal facility. Access control vestibules are designed to specifically combat tailgating. So tailgating is the practice of opening the door for someone else without checking their credentials in any way. This control vestibules only allow one person to enter at a time. So if you look at this picture, one person can enter, then this whole this whole uh, capsule basically closes. That person might be scanned further, or it closes and then the door on the other side opens. And only when there's one entrance open at a time, so someone can't enter in with another person. Now, in this area, we would have cameras here. We would have security guards in that area as well, because I mean, if you look at this, you could probably fit more than one person. So you need to have, usually you have some other security controls to ensure that you don't, even, that you don't have uh, tailgating even within the access control vestibule. So on its own, it's not gonna be incredibly useful at combating tailgating, uh, but it is designed to help prevent that. And you can see there's even an RFID reader here. So someone can scan their RFID badge, could open the vestibule, they can walk in. And you could have automated sensors to detect if there's more than one person within the vestibule as well. So they're designed to only allow one person in at a time. Oh, those are also referred to as man traps, but the more modern term is access control vestibule. That's probably what you'll see on the test. We also see bollards and barricades. It, these are kind of a bollard is specifically designed for vehicle traffic, but they're kind of interchangeable terms. Barricades are more general. They can be used to restrict human or vehicle traffic. A bollard specifically is this, usually a cylinder that fits into the ground. It's designed to prevent a vehicle from entering or from accessing a certain part of the facility. So a bollard is going to stop a vehicle. Even if the vehicle is coming in at speed, the bullard is designed to stop that vehicle entirely. Now, sometimes bullards can be used, they can go into the ground, they could be set to come out of the ground and only activate in certain times. Now, you can see this is a loading dock here and that these bullards are actually designed to go into the ground and come back out of the ground. So when this gate is no longer used, the bullards are put in place to prevent vehicles from ramming through the gate. But if you wanted to use that access point, you could raise the gate, lower the bollards, and then vehicle traffic can go through. It'd be very useful to have bollards that are designed to raise or lower from the ground. Bollards can also be designed as other things to be, make it more aesthetically appealing, make it more pretty. You can have bollards that look like plants. You can have planters. You can actually have plants in them, and they'll be big concrete and metal bollards, but 
they'll have a little hollow out section you have plants in them so it just looks like a planter and the main goal here is to stop vehicle traffic though so that's the main goal with bollards uh, and you want to be able to stop a vehicle even if it's going at high speed so usually if you hit a bollard you're not gonna have a good time <laughs> all right now guards are great because guards can be used for a lot of different things i mean humans are very versatile we can do a lot of different tasks we're not just set for one task so Guards are a fantastic compensating control, a control that can be used in place of another control. Because say your security camera malfunctioned. Well, you can set a guard to look at that area of the facility, for example, to compensate for the fact that your, your camera is malfunctioning. You can have a guard do a patrol to be a deterrent. Or maybe you have a hole in your fence. While you're waiting for the fence to be fixed, you set up a guard, you set up a guard patrol around the fence line to check and see if anybody is coming in or to serve as a deterrent. If you have guards roaming around your facility, an intruder would be far less likely to want to you know, enter your facility um, or try. I mean, unless we're talking some secret squirrel spy stuff, uh, usually guards can be pretty helpful. This can also respond to incidents. So if say an alarm goes off, you have a guard check out what happens uh, or why the alarm was uh, going off in the first place maybe there's a temperature alarm in the data center guards can come in and see if there's a fire and address the issue so it's very helpful to have somebody on hand to especially in off hours to address these things Guards can also be very helpful when it comes to personnel actions if you have a hostile termination uh, you might want to have security guards in your facility to maybe facilitate a peaceful exit from the facility we'll say it that way so security guards can be very helpful. Alarms are great at alerting personnel. They're also helpful when you have guards. You can have alarms set to link to many different types of events. You can have alarms for fire, for heat. Okay, if the temperature gets too high, we're gonna have an alarm goes off. Uh, if there's a fire detected, an alarm would go off. That could be an audible alarm. That could be alarm that is sent through a computer system to maybe the chief information officer or the CISO, chief information security officer automatically if there's maybe a temperature or a malfunction within one of the devices. If a device shuts down unexpectedly, you can have alarms from a technical stance, but from a physical stance, usually we're, we're talking alarms for health and human safety. So fire alarms like this one pictured here, usually have some sort of a speaker and then some sort of light to alert personnel that there would be a fire and that evacuation from the facility is advised at that point. Now they can also be deterrent. They can be deterrents for intruders. Maybe you have an alarm if someone's trying to enter the facility, open a door that shouldn't be open, an alarm might go off and you have a sign. Do not open, alarm will sound. I'm sure if somebody, an intruder is trying to enter a facility, an alarm goes off, they may be less likely to stay around expecting police or law enforcement to show up. You can also have alarms on windows, glass break alarms can detect the sound of broken glass and then sound an alarm to basically uh, indicate that someone's trying to break into a window, for example. You could also have alarms that work on vibration on the glass or on fences. Those are called PIDAS whenever you talk about uh, fence perimeter intrusion detection and security, I believe, PIDAS. So that's uh, for fences where you have a vibration alarm essentially if someone tries to climb your fence that alarm can go off and these can be linked to alert guards if you have guards on facility alarms can all be sent to the guard shack or the guard facility uh, to alert them as well so alarms have a lot of different uses be deterrents or used to detect certain activity <laughs>